Hello friends and welcome to part 2 of my February team. Today we're going to make 3 lovely weekly spreads and the most importantly we're going to paint them only with coffee. So take one cup of coffee for you and one for your journal and let's get started. My name is Emilia and you're watching Bullet Journal Engineer. In the last video we did the monthly cover with a few trackers so if you haven't watched it go check it out in the description. Now we are ready. Ah, yes, let me flatten a bit more these pages. Okay, there is no point, so I'm just going to start with the stamps. This year I decided to number all the weeks in my weekly spreads. It looks so much more diligent and I also know exactly how many weeks have passed and how many are left. Ha, <laughs> simple math, Emilia, it's not something to be proud of. <laughs> anyway, so welcome to week number 5, obviously. And I finally remember that I have clips to use to straighten my page. It's a lot more convenient now. As you know, I always like to put a Monty calendar in all of my weekly spreads to not lose track of the month. Usually I use one specific square stamp, but since I'm doing everything with a brush and free hand in this theme, I don't feel like putting a stamp here. Furthermore, I would like to draw my theme to be more circular as you saw the coffee stains in the last video. So the square stamp won't fit in at all. And to make the calendar more coherent with the entire theme, I draw a semicircle and of course I make artificial scattered drops. Last time we tried to spread them with a hairdryer, but it didn't work as we expected. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, they look nothing like naturally splashed drops. So I made them with the help of my brush. Now that we have a calendar, I will make 7 circles each for a day of the week. I tried to make them a little careless because that's how they would look like if I really pressed a cup on the top. In fact, why not as much a cup on the top? Last time it didn't go very well, but I like to repeat my mistakes several times as I do in my life, so let's try it again. With the kind assistance of my mother's coffee cup. Thank you mom. I cover the bottom of the cup with coffee and this time I use a lot more coffee than the previous time because I think that was a problem and the reason why it didn't work out. So yep and boom. Well it actually turned pretty cool. Let's repeat. I do it with such enthusiasm that even the camera shakes on the top of the table. A quick tip that I can give you for drawing the splashy drops is to do them before the main stain dries. In this way you can achieve really smooth color without visible borders between the main circle and the splashes. As you can see while they're still wet I start painting the drops from the circle. I dry them quickly with a hair dryer but on a low speed to not blow out the drops. And it's time to continue with the days of the week. As I mentioned in the previous video, I'm not a coffee person and I have no idea about the different types of coffee. So I decided to dig into its history. It turned out that the coffee is the second most popular beverage in the world after water. Oh my god people, you really drink a lot of coffee and I'm just painting it with it here. I tried to find out where it came from but it turned out that there is a serious dispute between Ethiopia and Yemen. Both countries have local legends that someone accidentally tried a red bush fruit. Yes, coffee grows on bushes and it looks like this. And after that person ate the fruit, it felt a surge of energy, you know, the caffeine inside. But I decided to go deeper into the rabbit hole and I found that the coffee bush actually originated from Ethiopia, but the first time that coffee was roasted was in Yemen. From there the coffee enters the Arab culture, then comes to Europe, then to America and the rest is history. Since the main role of the coffee is obviously to deal with Mondays, I write a related quote. Honestly, I would love to have this morning routine, waking up, making a coffee, watching the sunrise, dressing for work. But no, I'm like a warm, wake up, no, snooze, where's my sock, oh my god, I'm late. It's always kind of mess in the mornings lately, but my bullet journal is helping me to keep that mess in a bottle for some time. Well, our first weekly spread is quite simple and easy, and now it's time to go for the next one. In fact, I'm skipping the next page because I'm going to be at a ski camp with my university this week, and I'm thinking of writing memories and attaching photos. As you know, I'm using my bullet journal as a memory book, so I can just remember things that later I would usually forget. <laughs> I continue with week number 7 and more interesting facts about coffee. We answer it where it came from and let's see where it grows now. Interestingly, there is a whole term for what is called a coffee belt or the bean belt. This is a meteorological zone around the earth where there are perfect conditions for coffee to grow. It includes countries such as Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, El Salvador, Taiwan, India, Vietnam, Myanmar, Sumatra, Indonesia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Yemen, Australia and even more. You got the idea? The world has enough coffee to survive the upcoming Monday. 
I'm going to interrupt the little story about coffee to note how proud I am from myself for thinking of putting a sheet while making this impression. I needed only a quarter of it, so yep, I use it like 100% of brain power to think of this. Anyway, back to the story. Of course, as we all know, the largest producer of coffee is Brazil, where 70% of the coffee is made. A lot, isn't it? And that's not all. Actually, coffee has different varieties. Basically, there are four. There are a lot more, but the basic ones are four. From this, Arabica type of coffee is the most widespread. By the way, right here, I found that it turns super duper cool to brighten up the current week with coffee. It turns out to be a really nice ombre tone that I had to do with the last week as well. In the last week, I just did it with a marker. I should have done it with coffee there too. I also add a circle for my weekly tasks and then I write quote about coffee. And no matter that I'm saying the word coffee for an hour, I still make a mistake while writing it. Ugh. Yet the quote is really nice, people don't forget to take a break whether for coffee, tea or just to have a walk. Don't overwork yourself. Nobody likes over roasted coffee beans. Talking about likes, if you enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to the channel. I would really love to have you on the community here. The next spread I will make will be only one page because I want the whole order to be occupied with a drawing and quote. I felt kinda arts today. Before I start drawing, I quickly dry the left side so that it doesn't absorb too much coffee. I know some people will live on coffee, but my journal obviously is not a person, so I need to be careful with the amount of coffee I put on the page and you should do the same. I do the same font as I used on my cover page. I really liked it because I don't need to draw everything in advance and I can really go full freestyle while painting. And this is a freedom that I really appreciate. I will not cut out parts of the video here so you can see how I make the lines if you want to recreate this font in your notebook. I start coloring with coffee and my notebook is already starting to smell like coffee, but I like it. By the way, I noticed that drying your pages with a hair dryer has two advantages. The first one is that the page doesn't fold, you know, you, you dry it quickly, so you don't allow the coffee to soak in. And the second one, which is a bonus, is that when you dry a coffee really quickly, the coffee pigment thickens and becomes more darker, which I personally really like. I finished the quote with the black marker of Faber-Castell. It is really satisfying to draw exactly with this marker and I'm quite satisfied with how it looks like on the page. Something that I forgot to add while filming this video is a small decoration of the letters with a few cute lines, but you can see it right now in the photo in the corner. I really like adding those small cute lines in different fonts so they can build up to the whole perception of the font. And now we continue with the page for the days of the week. I divide it into six equal parts and enter the days of the week. At all, I'm really happy how the entire team turned out. The color palette is pretty nice and you can do it only with one type of coffee. You don't need to mix different types of coffees. You need just one coffee and a brush. By the way, I would be more than happy to hear more coffee facts from you in the comments. I'm sure that everybody knows something about coffee. So if you know any, write them down. I'll be there to read them. Next week, I will share with you my flip through of 2021 bullet journal and you can see there all amazing spreads and ideas I did in 2021. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel and join the community. I'll be really happy to have you here. So that's all for now, folks. I'm going to see you in the next video. And until then, don't forget to stay on the sunny side.